life. Genesis chapter number 3. All right, we're continuing our study on the book of Genesis. I'm glad you saved this afternoon. Amen. 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 All right, Genesis chapter 3. We left off last week uh, around verse number 2 or 3. Now let's just start in verse number 1 and get a good context again. All right, Genesis chapter 3, verse number 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, He shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, excuse me, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God had said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. We looked last week at how Eve added to the word of God. God never said, Don't touch it. Right. And she subtracted from the word of God. She left off the word freely there. In verse number 3. Now look at that verse before. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Let's stop right there. We'll probably, we may get a little further than that, but let's just stop right there and pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for your mercy and your grace, Father. We love you so much for all that you do. Lord, I pray that you help me now as I try to preach. Lord, that you would uh, give me the words to say. Father, I pray that you would continue to work. Lord, settle nerves, calm everybody. And Lord, I pray that you would uh, help our church during this time. And Lord, I pray that you'd give us something out of your word even now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, notice here in verse number four, we find the first lie ever told in the Bible. First lie ever told in the Bible is, Ye shall not surely die. So notice here, God had said, You will die, but the serpent says, oh, You won't die. And he gives in verse number five, and notice five is number what? Death. death. He says, For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now we looked last week at who those gods were. These are the fallen angels, and the devil is tempting Eve, saying, Hey, look, Eve, uh, the Lord doesn't want you to eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because once you eat of it, he, he knows that you're going to be like him. You're going to realize good and evil, and you'll be like a god. And so, that listen, that is what New Age philosophy is all about, uh, getting enlightened. Who, who was it that was talking to me about... Uh, it was just downstairs in the fellowship hall today. Somebody was talking about some kind of new diet. Is it some atheist said? Oh. Yeah, what was you talking about? I seen a book done like that rising shine that was atheist to enlightenment in 98. Yeah. So I was thinking maybe she went on like this spiritual journey and found God. But it really she had turned to a diet. Yeah, it was some kind of diet that helps you like enlight get enlightened to atheism or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah some kind of crazy something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, yeah, it's what, and that's what it is. It's like, oh, well, I got so enlightened. I, I know right from wrong now, and I know the truth now. I'm so enlightened. And, and God and Christianity and the Bible, they don't want you to know this stuff. They don't want you to have the hidden truth. Even like if people say, oh, well, you know, I used to be King James only, but God really opened my eyes, and now I use the NIV. Yeah. Oh, you know, I, I, I used to I used to go to an old fashioned church, but God really enlightened me, and now I go to a church with have rock and roll bands. I, I hear that stuff all the time. Oh, brother Sluter, I used to be like you, but God really opened my eyes, and I really had the truth. Notice that whole philosophy. Of, hey, you just need to get your eyes open. You need to get enlightened, and you need to see the world. You're so narrow minded. And you're so bigoted and you're so, you know, da 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 Listen, that is the battle cry of the devil. The right. devil says, hey, uh, why don't you enlighten yourself? Why don't you get a little taste there? But people say, well, don't you at least want to know what it feels like to get drunk or what it feels like to be high? Or, no, I don't want to know what that's like. Amen. Well, oh, my goodness, but if you could just realize how much fun it or people do. Well, how do you know you don't like it? My, my kids all the time. Levi is such a picky eater. I mean, I'm talking about he don't eat enough pizza, 
chicken, and that's basically about it. Maybe like a peanut butter sandwich every now. He don't eat nothing. Jake's the same way. Jake is, I remember, listen, Jake is so bad. I remember we was in the cookout parking lot for 20 minutes. I said, Jake, I am not leaving this parking lot until you take a bite. You know what it was? I was trying to get him to take a bite of a chicken quesadilla. Chicken and cheese and a tortilla. That was it. I can't do it, man. I can't do it. I just can't. Huh? It was a suck. I said, have you ever had a chicken quesadilla? He goes, no. I said, well, why don't you want it? He goes, I, I don't like it. I was like, how do you know you don't like it? You've never tried one, right? Now, no, he didn't. He didn't. Yeah. But I mean, it, but it's like the kids. If we if we want the kids to taste something, they're like, no, I don't like it. Like you never try. It. And then they'll like they'll do like this, and it'll like the bear, like one molecule <laughs> of it will touch their tongue. Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it. You know that kind of thing. Now notice though, watch this now. The devil. That's how the devil gets you though. Well, how do you know you don't like it? You never tried it. How do you know you're not going to like it? You, 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 you're missing out. That, oh, all you Christians, you're just missing out on a whole bunch of stuff. You're missing out on a good time. You're missing out on all this knowledge. We're so enlightened. We're so smart. Notice what Romans 1, though, says. Professing themselves to be wise, they became what? Fools, right? That's the danger of enlightenment. I'm not, listen, there's nothing wrong with an education. There really isn't. I'm all for education. I'm all for going to Bible school. we got a Bible institute here. I like it. I like getting an education. In fact, my schedule's kind of slowing down a little bit for the second part of the year. I'm actually going to do some uh, uh, some extra insurance school. I'm going to go get my med sub uh, certification. I'm going to go go do a little bit of extra uh, education on my, on my insurance licensing and, and get some med subs where I can start writing some med subs every now and then. Uh, just to give me something to do so I'm not just sitting around piddling. I, I'm all for continuing the education. I'm all for learning new stuff. But you've got to be careful about knowledge because what does 1 Corinthians 8 say? say uh, what does 1 Corinthians 8 say? Yeah. Knowledge does what? Puffeth up. Right? Knowledge puffeth up. With much knowledge there is much what? Sorrow. That's what Ecclesiastes says. And this is what you've got to understand. Listen to me very closely. I got all social media. I got off Twitter and Facebook. I still get on YouTube and watch some videos every now and then. I, every now and then I watch. I, I, I've been watching a little bit more than I should have lately. I like watching them cooking shows, man. I don't know what it is with cooking shows. I like watching cooking shows. I do. I like people like how to make a pizza with only two ingredients. You know, stuff like that. You know, I, I just like that kind of stuff. I like watching them do build huts out of mud. You ever seen them? Those guys. They like building swimming pools out of like banana leaves or whatever. I don't know. I like watching that stuff. I like watching dumb stuff. But notice here, I, when, you, when you talk about, well, preacher, why don't you preach on rock and roll? Why don't you preach on different things? And hey, have you seen the latest news? Let me say this, and you can like this or lump it. You better be real careful about wanting to be up to date with all the latest stuff. Because what ends up happening is, is you spend all your time studying evil things yep. and not enough time studying good things. Right. 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 You know one of the reasons why I quit watching the news so much is because, listen, you know what Paul said? Paul says to be simple concerning what? Evil. evil. But be wise concerning good. Notice, be simple concerning evil. You say, preacher, don't you want to study out all the evil things people are doing so you can preach against them? No, I don't. How many of y'all remember when that rapper came out with those famous, those, with those shoes that had like, were, like hell Satan had 666 and had a drop of human blood and all that kind of crazy stuff? You say, preacher, why didn't you get up and show the shoes and show the rapper and expose all Because simple concerning evil. Harold Seitler, his grandson, Ben Carper, used to preach for me years ago, and he said that there was a, a, uh, a, a, an adult store down on the corner of such and such street in Greenville. He said, you know that us teenage boys never knew it was there. He said, most preachers would have got up and said, bless God, that store down there on the corner of such and such adult, that, 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 that. and in preaching against it would have actually exposed the young people to what it was and where it was. Yes. See how that thing works? So I want to be simple concerning evil. I don't need to know everything. That is the problem with our generation. Listen to me. It is information overload. Amen. 
It is a two-edged sword. We've got the dumbest generation, yet at the same time, we've got a generation that has anything and everything at their fingertips. Well, I don't know how to tie a tie. Do you know, you, you know how I learned how to tie a tie? I got on YouTube and watched it. You can learn a lot on YouTube. Maybe some things y'all need to know. But understand, knowledge, information overload is the problem with our generation. It is information all the time, constantly being pumped into it. 24 hour news. Guys, let me ask you a question. This is perfect timing for this. What's the biggest, hottest story in the news right now? Coronavirus. It has been since last March. Notice the viewership and the ratings for news stations are through the roof. You know why? Because everybody's glued to the TV trying to find out what the latest break in the coronavirus is. So guess what? You do know, you know how, does anybody know, now this guy, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be ugly, but I am being a little bit of smart enough right now. Does anybody know how news stations make their money? Yes. The, 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 the commercials, right? They make them out of commercials. How do you determine how much money you charge for a commercial? You might not. By, by how many people watch what you got on. That's why it's a million dollars for a 30 second ad during the Super Bowl. So listen now, you ready? Watch this. So a news station makes its money by you watching it. So guess what they're trying to do? Get you to watch it. You say, preacher, this all sounds so elementary. I know, but notice how easily we take the bait. The bait. Breaking news, Delta variant. I, I, literally, I was watching the news, and it was it was in it was in a uh, in a in a, a, a restaurant, and it had it, it was. Breaking news, a cluster of Delta variant found in Mississippi. And they came on, you know, what, you know how many the cluster, the, the cluster was? It was six people. <laughs> a cluster. When you think about a cluster of grapes, you have six grapes hanging off of it, you know. Understand, the news media is there and it's designed to keep you watching it because that's how they make their money. You know? It's knowledge. Knowledge. Denzel Washington, to quote, to quote, quote the famous evangelist, Denzel Washington, all right? He, he's a movie star. But you know what he said? He says if you don't read the news, you're uninformed, and if you do read it, you're misinformed. Yeah, that's good. That's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Understand this. All the knowledge in the world is not what you need. You know what you need? You need to do what God says to do. That's right. Isn't that ultimately what Adam and Eve did? They did what they wanted to do. And trust the Lord with all thy heart and lean not in thy own understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. But Eve got tempted with the knowledge. Hey, if you do this, you'll become as God. You'll have some secret hidden wisdom and knowledge. You know, it's like all these videos will pop up and say, I'm going to show you the five secrets on how to make $5,000 a day working from home. Y'all ever seen those things? Yeah. I'm going to show you, I, I was watching 10 secrets to write the best-selling book for next year. There's no secret to anything, folks. The reality of it is, is that's how they get you. The secret knowledge, the secret knowledge, the hidden wisdom, all this kind of stuff. No, listen, the Bible is very plain that God has revealed truth to us in the Scripture. Now notice, what does the devil tempt Eve with? Verse number 16, when the woman saw that the tree was what? Good for Food. You know what the Bible says over there in First John chapter number two? It says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. All that. The first temptation. Now listen, I am the world's worst right now. I was doing so good on my keto diet. And I don't know whether to blame Jake or my wife, but it sure ain't my fault. Um, no, it's my fault for sure. Me actually and Cindy said we're gonna go back on that keto diet tomorrow, right? We're going, to lose, we're going to lose 20 pounds, for sure. I, I'm going to try to go back on that keto diet. But I think it's interesting. I asked Brother Peacock one time, I said, Brother Peacock, how much of a gateway to our spiritual life 
is food. Because when you think of food, I'm not one of these people who say, oh, bless God, if you, eat a, if you eat a Twinkie or you drink a Coke, then you're just not right with God. I'm not one of those. There are some people like that. I'm not like that, though. But you know what? Let me say this. The first temptation that, that, that ever came, the first sin that mankind committed, guess what it was connected with? It's food. Notice the first temptation that Jesus that was recorded, because Jesus was tempted the whole 40 days before night, but the first recorded temptation by the Lord was what? Food, turn these stones into bread. When the Antichrist is going to try and get people to take the mark, what's one of the things he's going to do? Take their food away. You can't buy or sell anything without the mark. Right? Whenever God sends judgment on a people, what's one of the, there's three judgments that God sends on a people. War, Famine and pestilence. Right now we've got pestilence going on in our country. COVID. There's also famine. So notice here, the first temptation was with food. It was good for food. That's the lust of the flesh. And it was pleasant to the eyes, right? The lust of the eyes. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. There's the pride of life. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Now notice, this is where you've got to pay really close attention. They took the fruit and they both ate of it. But now I've heard people say, well, bless God, this is all Adam's fault because Adam shouldn't have let his wife be wandering around the tree alone and all that kind of stuff, blah, 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 blah. But notice what happened. You say, man, I can't believe Adam, Adam took the fruit and I can't believe Adam. You know, well, the reason why Adam got in a mess is because he listened to his wife. And the reason, I've heard preachers say that kind of stuff. Well, bless God, if Adam didn't listen to his wife, we wouldn't have this problem. And, you know, he, Adam's problem was he was, you know, he was hen pecked and he wasn't doing what, you know, he was trying to do what his wife told him to do, wasn't standing up and being the man of the house and all this kind of stuff. Wait a second, time out on all that. Yeah. Look at 1 Timothy chapter number 2. 1 Timothy chapter number 2. Before you completely emasculate Adam and say he was just a spineless, Jelly spine that listened, you know, that, that was hen pecked and listened to his wife. Now look at 1 Timothy chapter number 2. And look there at verse number 11. 1 Timothy chapter number 2 and verse number 11. You there say amen. amen. All right, notice what it says here. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in what? Silence. Silence. Now that doesn't mean we don't let women sing. That doesn't mean women, when you walk in the back door, you can't talk anymore. That doesn't mean that women can't even testify in church. But what that does mean is that when it comes to matters of teaching, a woman is not to teach in the church, nor to usurp authority over a man. That's why we don't have women song leaders. That's why we don't have women deacons. That's why we don't have women preachers or teachers. That's why we don't have women in any type of leadership. That's not because we hate women. But it's because the Bible literally says that women are not to teach nor usurp authority over the man. Isn't that what it says? Yeah. Amen. Or we're Bible believers, right? I remember I showed that verse you know, to a Church of God guy who had, who had legal women preachers. I said, hey, who's that? Who's that back here? Who is that? Jackson. Jackson. Sit up and sit on the chair, son. Sit down. Thank you. Whose kid is that? Anyway. <laughs> You're not supposed to usurp authority over the man. I showed that verse to a guy and he said, well, uh, uh, that was just Paul and he that, that doesn't really apply to us anymore. Uh, 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 uh. Listen, that's not a big statement. I'm not, that's not, well, just a bunch of males show them. Better. No, 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 no. The Bible says that a woman's not to teach nor usurp authority. That's not my word. That's God's words right there. That's why, listen, there's nothing wrong with women Sunday school teachers teaching the small children all that kind of stuff to be usurp authority over a man. But once these, once these boys get old enough and they start becoming teenagers and men, you don't put a woman over, or you don't put a woman over them. That's against the Bible. You say, why? Well, he explains it. Verse 13, for Adam was first formed, then Eve. You know why God created man first? Because he didn't want to be told how to do it. Anyway, look at verse 14. Ha, 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 ha. Anyway, all right. See, my wife's not in here. That's why I told that joke. Anyway, for Adam was formed first, then Eve. Verse 14. Now, notice, here's where it is. You ready? 
And Adam was not deceived. Do you see that there? But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. The way that some of these Baptist preachers will preach it is that Eve came up and said, Hey, Adam, eat this fruit. Oh, okay, Eve, where'd you get this fruit? I'm not telling. Just eat it. It's so good. That's not how it happened. That's not how it worked. Adam, when he ate the fruit, he knew what he was doing. He was not deceived. So, watch what happens. Eve comes up, and I don't know how Adam knew she had eaten the fruit. I, you know, Dr. Upman thinks that, it, that Eve got pink in her flesh that, you know, because before, Dr. Upman believed that before man fell, he had a water-based blood system and that when Eve ate the fruit, her blood turned red and she began to blush and her face got color and that's how, you know, he knew. I don't know. That's all speculation. I don't know how he knew that, that Eve had eaten the fruit. Maybe it was just as simple as she'd go up and say, hey, Adam, I ate the fruit. I don't know. But somehow or another, Adam found out that his wife had eaten the fruit. Now stay with me here. So, she's standing there. She has now fallen. She has now sinned. She has spiritually died. Notice God said, In the day you eat thereof, you shall what? Surely die. Did Eve croak over dead? No. So it's not talking about physical death there. It's talking about a spiritual death. So Adam's standing there. He's looking at Eve. She realizes she's naked. She's trying to cover herself up. He has no idea what's going on. He's saying, why are you covering yourself? Why are you, why are you doing all this stuff? She says, I'm naked. He's sitting there thinking, what is naked? He has no knowledge of that. He now realizes that his wife has disobeyed God. He's going to live forever, but she's going to die. He gets to stay in the garden. She has to leave. Does that make sense to everybody? So, Adam and Eve cannot become what Adam, Eve is now taking the decision. She is no longer innocent. What, listen, once you are spoiled, you can never be unspoiled. Now, we understand salvation, regeneration, all that kind of stuff. But it's kind of like, listen, there, there, some scholar, Dr. Ruttman even thinks that maybe there was some kind of sexual act that went on. You can read over in 2 Corinthians chapter number 11, verse number 3. It seems to indicate that maybe there was even some kind of sexual uh, action that took place between Eve and the devil. We're not sure that's a bit of speculation. But, but notice it's like virginity. Once you are, you are a virgin, and then once you're not, you can never be a virgin again. Right. All these modern Christians now are saying purity culture is killing Christianity. And purity culture is so toxic. No, purity culture is absolutely 100% biblical. Amen. Yeah. It's biblical. I remember uh, hearing a story. I think it was Phil Kidd, actually, that was telling the story, if you can believe it. And uh, he had some girls there, and he preached on purity. And there was some girls that he overheard making fun of this one girl. And they were saying, oh, you, you're so ugly. A boy wouldn't have nothing to do with you. And we're, you haven't even lost your virginity yet and all this kind of stuff. And he overheard that girl looking at, looked over at them and said, well, she said, I could become what you are tonight, but if you lived another hundred years, you could never be what I am now. That's pretty, pretty bold, isn't it? Yeah. Once you lose your virginity, you never get it back. You're no longer, even if you lose it through the marriage bed, you still just never get it back. It's the same way here. Adam knows that what Eve has done cannot be undone. Now, we understand that Jesus Christ came and all that, but at this time, it couldn't be undone. She was never going to be what he was. So in order for him to be with his bride, she can't become what he is, but he can become what she is. Watch this now. So in order for Adam to be reconciled to his bride, he has to eat the fruit himself and become what she is. Remember what we talked about this morning, how that Jesus Christ became a man? Notice, for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteous of God in him. Jesus Christ knew that in order for us to be with him, we could not be what he is, so he became what we were. Right? 
becomes a beautiful picture of Christ in the church. Where am I? I'm still in 1 Timothy. Go back to, go back to Genesis. We're almost done. We're near home base here. We're, we're around in third base. We're almost done. You ready? Look at Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3 and look there at verse number 6. And gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed thick leaves together and made themselves aprons. We're going to come back next week. We'll go ahead and, and stop about right here. We'll come back next week and look, though, at verse number 7, where the Bible talks about those thick But the eyes of them both were open, and they knew they were naked. That is, listen, that is why children, when they're young, can walk around naked with no shame. Right? I mean, they just, I, my, my, my two twins, they still, they, they can still walk out without any clothes on and not really bother. But my oldest one, he, he doesn't do that. He, he doesn't even like coming around with mom and dad anymore. You know why? Because there's a certain point where children get this natural understanding that I'm supposed to wear clothes. Right? Yep. That's part of the curse. That's part of the knowledge of good and evil. That's why I remember that demoniac man, he was devil-possessed. What was one of the things about his devil possession? He was naked. You know, you know people that can just take their clothes off and, and, and be in front of people completely naked. And, and, and I'm not even talking about you know men and women. I'm talking about these people that can just be naked in front of just anybody. These, these women that can just, just strip down and just be in, be in bikinis and all this kind of stuff. And these dudes that can wear, you know, these short shorts and pull their shirts off and just walk around with basically no clothes on. There's something just unnatural about it. Man. I don't, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't know how in the world these men will go out and let their wives lay on, and their girlfriends lay on the beach in these, these, these uh, bathing suits. Amen. Holy cow. Yeah. It'd be a cold day where the boogie... I mean, y'all know how my wife dresses. Y'all 